Hello there, you gorgeous person you. I'm Chris from Techspert, and today we're going to be checking out this absolute gaming beast, the Yanio 2. This gaming machine is a portable powerhouse sporting AMD's Ryzen 7 6800U and an even sharper Full HD display compared with the Steam Deck. At the time I shot this video, the Yanio 2 had already far surpassed its target on Indiegogo. You can grab yourself one on there at an early bird price of 700 quid or 850 US dollars. So let's whip the Yanio 2 on out of the box, take you on a full on tour, test out those game and chops and for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do pog subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! So first up, what do you get packed inside of this sizable box? Well, first up, all of the usual quick start guides, etc. It's got a free gift of some anti-scratch tape and an operating pick, lovely. And there's the big boy itself, the Yanio 2, absolute beast this thing. And then underneath all of this, We've got the charging adapter plus various heads so you can plug it in wherever you roam. You've just got a charging cable, you've got some USB A to USB C adapters as well. Basically, absolutely everything you need to get started with the Ayanio 2. And that's your lot. So now let's crack on, check out the actual hardware. So here in all of its splendor is the Ayanio 2, and it's immediately apparent to me, having just reviewed the Ayanio Air Pro, that this is considerably bigger and bulkier. While the Air Pro was more Nintendo Switch sort of size, this thing is definitely closer to the Steam Deck. In fact, for the curious, here's the two of them side by side. It's not quite as long as the Steam Deck, but it is certainly just as chunky. And it's 680 grams, it's got a proper heft to it as well. Gotta say though, I do prefer the overall design of the Ayanio 2 compared with the Steam Deck. It just looks like a more premium device. For a start, that front is all glass, apparently impact resistant and scratch resistant, so hopefully it'll stay looking nice and fresh. The only break in that glass finish is for the buttons and the various controls. You've only got the one seam where the front panel meets the back panel, there's no visible screws or anything, so a nice clean crisp finish. And the ergonomics are fantastic as well, as you can see there, a nice curvy finish, so it feels really good to grip. In fact, speaking of the curvy finish, according to the manufacturer, the Ayanio 2's design is inspired by the baby sleeping position. In fact, quoting directly from the Ayanio 2 website here, the state of the baby in the mother's body is natural and comfortable, unlike this sentence. But there's no denying that the Ayanio 2 is indeed comfortable to clutch for extended periods, of course, just gotta bear in mind the weight is best if you're leaning against a desk or a table, especially if you've got miniature little baby biceps like myself. This right here is the lovely Sky White model of the Yanio 2, but you can also grab this game and console in Story Black if you want something a bit closer to the Steam Deck. And let's take a quick tour of the rest of the Yanio 2. So up top you've got the power button which also has a built-in fingerprint sensor. Up top you also have a volume slider, you've also got two USB ports. You've got a big old vent, you've then got double triggers either side, you've also got two shortcut buttons as well, LC and RC. And you can customize these to do whatever your little heart desires, but by default LC brings up the virtual keyboard, which is very handy. As far as the main controls here on the face go, they're very similar to the Nintendo Switch. You've got your dual thumbsticks, you've got your D-pad, your face buttons, you've got settings buttons and a shortcut for bringing up the Aya Quick Tool. More on that in just one second. And then down below you've got another USB port, you've also got a memory card slot and a headphone jack. Now, as you can see here, you are running full fat Windows 11 on the Ayanio 2, but with the usual little tweaks and touches. The main tweak being the addition of Aya Space. This basically acts like a dashboard to access all of your games. So as you can see, they can jump straight into any titles that you have downloaded. And then if you go to the assistant, this is where you fully customize and set up your device. So for one, you'll find detailed information on your system right here. You've also got usage stats as well. And they're pretty in-depth, so you can see exactly what each core of the CPU is up to. Check out the network stats as well. You've got full Wi-Fi 6 support on this bad boy. This is also where you'll customize the shortcuts and everything. And if you dive into Master Controller, in here you can actually customize the sensitivity of these thumbsticks, which is very handy. Because certainly I found that when I was playing Doom Eternal, the sensitivity was just a bit too high, so occasionally I would end up staring at the bloody floor or the ceiling. Unfortunately, you don't seem to be able to customise the sensitivity on a game-by-game -game basis, or at least if you can, I haven't figured out how to do it. Inside of Aya Space, you'll also be able to customise the RGB lighten effect as well for those two thumbsticks. If you're not really a fan, you can completely turn it off, of course. Otherwise, because it is RGB lighten, you can choose from a selection of different colours. You've also got an application centre where you can install the likes of Steam, Epic, GOG, Galaxy. 
Just be aware that while a lot of modern games from the likes of Steam, you just download them and they'll immediately work with the Yenio 2's controls. Some of those older titles on the likes of GOG, you will have to spend a bit of time setting them up. You sometimes have to use a third party control mapper in order to actually get the thumbsticks and the buttons to do anything. And also when I tried installing GOG Galaxy directly through this menu, uh, well, as you can see, that didn't end too successfully. Thankfully, you can just download the likes of GOG Galaxy the traditional way through the website, so it's all good. And there you go, who needs Doom Eternal when you've got the good old classic original Doom 2 absolute belter. Getting that good bit of haptic feedback from this bad boy as well. Of course, to really take advantage of that gorgeous display, you will want to play some more modern fare like Doom Eternal. And that 7-inch touchscreen, it isn't OLED tech, sadly, same as the Steam Deck and the original Switch, but the quality is still fantastic. Sure, blacks aren't quite as deep as what you would get with an OLED panel, but they're really not far off, just like on the Steam Deck display. So that contrast is still pretty sharp, viewing angles are great, the brightness level, when you max that out, that'll definitely do the job. Unless you're trying to play it something kind of gloomy like Doom Eternal on a really sunshiny day. Unfortunately, as you can see there, the Yanio 2 screen is not anti-reflective. It is super glossy, so if there's any direct glare focused on that screen, then that will be a problem. Colours are pretty poppy as well for an IPS panel again. And the major advantage of the Yanio 2's display versus the likes of the Steam Deck and the Switch is the fact that it's full HD resolution, 1920 by 1200, whereas most rivals are just standard HD. And this thing certainly spunks out crisp, detailed visuals, the likes of Doom, the likes of Uncharted, just look absolutely stunning on this thing. You kind of forget that you're playing on a portable device. Of course, the frame rate does once again max out at 60 hertz here on the Yanio 2. That might be a deal breaker for some, but I certainly found even fast paced FPSs like Doom Eternal still looked absolutely stunning. That gameplay was perfectly fluid, definitely no tearing or any other graphical issues that I noticed. Now, as for the audio, well, you've got a pair of stereo speakers which are mounted on the bottom of the Yanio 2 console, so unfortunately, that audio isn't blasted right at your face. But all the same, it is proper beefy stuff. Let's once again get a bit of Doom 2 on the go. And then let's just boost that volume all the way up to the max. And as you can hear there, that is super loud. Get this thing cranked up to max on the train or the bus and you will annoy the piss out of every granny on there. Great stuff. And that audio isn't particularly tinny, even when you crank it up to the maximum levels either. But if you want to, you do have that headphone jack. You do have full Bluetooth 5.2 support on here as well. And likewise, those haptics ain't too bad at all. Apparently, this uses the same rumble tech as the Nintendo Switch. And it kind of feels like an upgraded version of what you would get on a game and smartphone, something like the ROG phone. And this does seem to work even for older titles like Doom 2 as well, which is nice. And you've got full gyroscopic controls on here as well. Now, the Yenio 2 obviously isn't cheap. It's more expensive than the likes of the Steam Deck, the Nintendo Switch and everything. But where you really benefit from this thing is the upgraded performance. The Yenio 2 is powered by AMD's Ryzen 7 6800U, backed by either 16 or 32 gigs of DDR5 RAM. I've got the 16 gig model. And before I got game, and I also dove on into the quick tools section and I just bumped up the power setting to the ultimate game mode, 22 watts and change up the fan setting as well, all the way up to, again, the maximum level wild. If you want to, you can actually hook up an external GPU to the Yenio 2 using the USB 4.0 connection, but certainly as of right now, that's not even necessary. You see, the Yenio Air Pro before it, it had a Full HD display, but I found that any more recent or demanding title, you had to knock it down to 720p resolution, otherwise it just simply would not run well. But here on the Yenio 2, that is not a problem at all. Doom Eternal ran perfectly, full HD resolution on ultra nightmare detail settings. Not one single time did I see that frame rate dip at all. Never noticed a single stutter, stumble, judder whatsoever. It just played perfectly on that full HD resolution. And it's the exact same story for Uncharted as well. This game really struggled on the Air Pro at full HD resolution. I barely even got the frame rate into double digits. But here on the Yanio 2, once again, full HD resolution, pumped up the graphic settings all the way up to the very top levels. And once again, absolutely fluid, never dipped below 30 frames per second, often hovered around the sort of 35 to 40 level, sometimes reaching up to near 60. And again, I didn't see any graphical issues whatsoever and the controls perfectly responsive, no lag, no latency or anything. 
and the Yenio 2's cooling system, which includes a built-in fan just like the Steam Deck, was just as effective as Valve's machine. Lots of hot air pushed out of this thing, but I didn't notice any throttling whatsoever going on, even after an hour of full-on gaming on these really intensive titles. For your storage needs, you've got a PCIe 4.0 SSD stuffed inside of the Yanio 2. You've got a choice of storage as well, all the way from half a terabyte up to two terabytes. And loading times were almost non-existent on the likes of Doom Eternal, literally about three, four seconds and you are into the game. On Uncharted took a little bit longer, but again, pretty speedy compared with some devices. However, if you are looking for a portable gaming device to take on long trips where you might want to pack a portable battery pack with this thing as well, because the battery size is only 4,350 milliamp hours, considerably smaller than the 10,000 milliamp hour effort crammed inside of the Air Pro. And between that and the sheer bulk of this thing as well means that much like the Steam Deck, it is a portable console that's best left at home, just carried from room to room. You can lounge on the sofa and play, you can play it in bed, on the bogs, whatever. But you will need to make sure you plug it in between play sessions because you literally will get about 90 minutes of gaming on this thing if you're playing the likes of an Uncharted or a Doom Eternal with those graphic settings bumped up and obviously the power mode and everything on max levels. So not quite as good as what you would get from the Steam Deck and certainly not as good as what you would get from the Nintendo Switch OLED. But anyhow, there you go. There is my unboxing and early review of the Ayanio 2. And I gotta say, I am impressed. It's not as portable as some previous versions like the Air Pro, but my God, the performance of this thing is absolutely stunning. That full HD display is a cracker despite not being OLED tech. And this thing should be pretty much future-proof as well for the foreseeable, especially since you can connect an external GPU if you absolutely need that extra bit of power. Anyway, that's what I think. What do you guys reckon? It'd be great to hear your thoughts on the Yenio 2 down in the comments below. Please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech. And have yourselves a really wonderful rest of the week. Cheers, everyone. Love you.